A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Recently, a young girl was rushed to the hospital with a diagnosis of meningitis. And thanks to the prayers and the good medical care, she recovered quickly and was well enough to be released within a few days from the hospital. And I was there at the hospital when she was being taken to her mother's car. And as the mother cradled this little three-year-old in her arms and carried her to the car, she kept saying to her mother, hold me, mommy, even though her mother was holding her tight already. Hold me, mommy, hold me. Hearing this simple story, I realized that when we call out to God or Mary for that matter, our prayers are part of a supplication. In other words, we ask, comfort me, help me, Mary. And part of our prayers is a proclamation in which we are saying, I know you comfort me. I know you help me. So aren't our cries to Mary also professions of faith in her? Isn't that the very fact that we call out to Mary in the first place? An indication that we place our lives in her hands. I read an article years ago about a man who died of leukemia in his mid-40s, and he was a man of deep faith and devoted love for his wife and his daughters. He kept a journal which consisted of pages chronicling his journey of faith and his prayers and his surrender. And one of the entries in the journal said, the simple childlike repetitions of the names of Jesus and Mary can work real miracles for us. At the top of a page near the end of the journal, he wrote, October 1991, Chip's Novena Prayer to Mary. Compose one sleepless night. Praise be Jesus and Mary, ever virgin. So this personal litany of chips consisted of 75 three-word prayers, which consisted of one right underneath the other. Prayers that were so simple, like, help me, Mary. Hold me, Mary. Protect me, Mary. Warm me, Mary. Cool me, Mary. Heal me, Mary. Cradle me, Mary. Take me, Mary. Humble me, Mary. Hear me, Mary. I remember when Blessed St. John, St. John Paul II preached his first homily in St. Peter's Square in 1978. He said, do not be afraid. Now in 1993, almost 20 years later, when he published Crossing the Threshold of Hope, he repeated these words, do not be afraid. Having survived an attempt on his life and serious illness, having watched the downfall of communism, and the escalating persecution of the church in other parts of the world, and having seen increased threats to human life and dignity, he began and ended his book with reflections on these very words, do not be afraid. This is really sacred biblical advice to us. The angel told Mary at the Annunciation and the shepherds at the birth of Jesus, do not be afraid. 
Joseph was told in a dream, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife into your home. An angel told the woman at the tomb, do not be afraid. Jesus said to his disciples, do not fear, little flock. Do not let your hearts be troubled. At a critical and troubled time in his ministry, St. Paul received a vision of the Lord who said to him, Do not be afraid. Go on speaking and do not be silent, for I am with you. As St. John began his book of Revelation, he wrote how he saw Christ in glory who said to him, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last the one who lives. So these holy witnesses of the Bible cling to God's promises and grow in faith. Their cries were acts of faith, proclamations also of God's loving kindness. And even as they spoke their cries and lifted up their petitions, they knew that they were safely in God's arms. The one upon whom they called was near, and there was no reason to be afraid. If you stop to think of it, in the course of our day, we have unceasing opportunities to call upon Mary. And so simply, there's no magic formula. We can simply say, guide me, Mary. Give me strength, Mary. I love you, Mary. Because calling upon her, we proclaim our faith in her saving love. And suddenly the duties of the day, as hectic or lonely or challenging as they might be, can often be transformed by the revelation of the presence of Jesus, which she brings to us when we cry out to her. And gradually we begin to realize that the very reason we were led to call out to her in the first place was that she was there all along waiting to bring Christ to us. So here's my advice to you. Pray always and do not be afraid.